Welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. In this video, I'd like to talk about one of my own watches, one that I wear regularly in rotation. It's the Breitling 806 1959 re-edition. It's one that I picked up a couple months ago. It's a limited edition that came out a couple years ago, and it's an absolutely beautiful, lovely, COSC certified chronograph from Breitling. And I must confess, I like the modern Navitimer. I like it in 41. I like it in 43, and I even like it in 46. It's a beautiful, bold design that's full, that's easy to wear, it carries that weight, carries the shine in the finish, and also carries the excellent anti-reflective treatment on the cambered sapphire crystals. They're very beautiful watches, and I kind of equate them to, say, a modern Mustang or a modern Challenger or Camaro or Corvette. They're beautiful in their own right, and they're very modern, they're easy to enjoy, but you go back to the original design inspiration, say with a Mustang or a Camaro or a Corvette, you go back to the late 1960s or mid-1950s, and you see the original design, you see the vintage or the retro reference, they're both awesome, and some, you know, some collectors are going to gravitate more toward modern but they'll appreciate the vintage and others will go, hey, I want the originals. I like the new stuff, but man, the originals are amazing. I feel as a watch collector, I'm kind of thinking that way here with the Navitimer. I like the new Navitimers quite a bit. I would definitely see myself using one on the day-to-day -day basis, just like I would with a Corvette or Challenger or Camaro, Camaro excuse me. But I put my money into a recreation of the original. I like this design language. I like the fact that Breitling was so faithful in recreating dimensions, recreating fonts, recreating the AOPA wings logo. Even the beaded bezel for your circular slide rule carries the same form and the same number of beads found here. I love this dramatically <laughs> domed crystal. In fact, it's ridiculous. It's such a big dome. You don't expect such a dramatic dome. You expect to see something like this on, say, a micro brand dive watch made out of bronze. You don't expect to see it on a 40 millimeter retro inspired Navitimer, uh, but it works well. Now, the original reference from 1959 from a completely different era over 60 years ago carried a plexiglass crystal. And this one also likewise has a plexiglass crystal, but Breitling has modernized it. They have taken the same shape and material and they have thinly applied a crystalline layer of sapphire. So you have that added scratch resistance, but you have the look of plexiglass. You have the non-distortion from oblique angles and you have a surprising amount of clarity while still having some light play and visual interest with reflections. This will not have excellent anti-reflective treatment like you would find on a modern Navitimer, but it still has that charm and appeal and attractiveness that you get with a retro watch. So I really like that. The next thing I enjoy is the lovely dial details. So let's go in on a macro level and take a look at this very full, very busy, you could, uh, you know, one could definitely argue dial, but I would say that it's not busy just for the sake of being busy. The navigation timer in and of itself is a busy design. You have a circular slide rule. You can make calculations on the fly as a pilot in the air, you know, as you're navigating your aircraft. You have sunken sub registers with guilloche texturing. You have uh, printed Arabic markers. And then you have syringe style hands here, painted white for contrast with your dark dial that carries a level of reflection to it or reflectiveness that is very beautiful and very warm. I like this busy dial. It's pleasantly busy. It's not overly cluttered. And yes, I can absolutely say it's easy to read at a glance. I don't have issues in, in telling the time with this. So I think it's a wonderfully balanced, wonderfully full, but admittedly, that won't be to every watch enthusiast's personal taste. Now, the next thing that I'd like to mention is the excellent tactile action of the various parts of the watch. So we have a sliding, uh, you know, bi-directional sliding rule here for your bezel with the beaded grip. That's nice to operate. We have very crisp actuation for your column wheel chronograph 
with your function pushers at the two and four o'clock positions. But the best part is the butter smooth winding of the crown at the three o'clock position. It's unlike any other BO1 modified movement that I've reviewed or had hands on with. I own a BO1 caliber within my Tudor Black Bay Chrono. And in contrast, they don't even feel like the same movement. The Tudor is much heavier, much grittier, much more mechanical feeling. And this one, you can barely tell that you're winding the mainspring within the case. It's, it's super smooth and very quiet. Very nice. I like the 70 hours of power reserve. It's a, a kind of a shame that you can't see the movement, the well-finished movement. But again, this is a faithful recreation of a watch from over 60 years ago. So you're, <laughs> you're going to have to enjoy the closed case back and look at your individual number of the limited edition to 1,900 and 59 units. Mine is in the upper 1600 section. So on the latter end of the production run. Overall, again, this is just a beautiful watch that is easy to enjoy. It's very comfortable. It, it sits trim and elegant on wrist. It's legible. It has that history. It has that retro charm. It has good accuracy, good actuation of the column wheel chronograph. And uh, surprisingly, it has good loom too and low light. So there isn't anything that I find obnoxious or disappointing with this watch. I've heard some watch enthusiasts say that it needs more water resistance, but again, this is a pilot's piece. <laughs> it's not a dive watch. If I'm going to engage in a water sport activity, I'm going to put on one of my dive watches and not wear a Navid timer. So the water resistance doesn't really bother me. The only thing that I found um, that I want to change, in fact, is this strap. This comes on a black leather strap with contrast tack stitching and a nice buckle, you know, a nice signature, nice hardware, but it's not very satisfying. So I took it off the OEM and I placed it on a polished German made from the brand Stabe Milanese mesh that I think looks really sharp. And I look forward to playing with this watch because again, it's very versatile. I think I'll commission some custom leather straps to be made. And I'd like to find out if the newest bracelet, the seven link bracelet from the Navid Timer 41 would be compatible here on my 40.9 millimeter diameter version, the 1959 re-edition. So uh, as soon as I find that out, I'll let you guys know in case you're contemplating a similar move. If you have one of these watches or you have a, a modern bracelet, but you want to add uh, the reference 806, I'll let you know. But thanks for watching today, guys. I appreciate all of the support that you give, the kind comments that I read in the comment section. Uh, let me know if you have specific questions about this watch. I'll do my best to try to help out and answer that. If you're looking for a Breitling, I'll leave links to the place, the authorized dealer where I purchased this one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So have a great day, guys. Catch you in the next one.